Streaming now, this is the Wood TV Live Desk. Multiple weapons charges, assault with a dangerous weapon, uh, also the domestic violence, which of course we have the PPO, as well as other weapons charges. So there's OSC file on Mr. Saffold. So when we attempted to make contact with him on the Benton Harbor warrant, um, he often fled, but we went with a team because of the, of the uh, officer safety file. So while on patrol uh, last night, uh, one of our sergeants, uh, Sergeant uh, uh, Reginald G, had saw one of the vehicles that Safo was was last known to be in. Um, saw him on a house that was on um, uh, Highland. Contacted other officers. So we have him in a, in a driveway. Uh, other officer came. Uh, Sergeant G went to make contact with Mr. Saffel. Um, Mr. Saffel then exited the, the car immediately and started shooting uh, at Sergeant G. Sergeant G uh, returned fire, uh, ultimately striking Mr. Saffel and ultimately uh, killing him. Uh, there were at least 15 rounds shot by Mr. Saffel and officers, and uh, we're still waiting on the state police investigation. This investigation has been turned over to the Michigan State Police that will do the criminal investigation for this. Um, so we're going to watch the video uh, of this incident. Uh, we had two officers that were hit. Sergeant G was hit twice. Uh, one in the abdomen, which was stopped by his vest. Other one was through his left leg. Uh, he was taken to Lakeland where he had uh, received surgery and he is in stable condition and doing well. Um, officer Blake Kinsler was the second officer who was shot. He was shot three times. Uh, he was shot twice in his midsection, which was caught by his belt. And also he was shot in his leg. Uh, he was shot when he went to assist Sergeant G who was down. And again, we're this full transparency. We're putting everything out there today. Uh, this is Sergeant G. Sergeant G has been a member of the department for six years. Uh, he has an outstanding uh, record with us. Um, he is of the community, uh, family man, father, and actually on his spare time during this water crisis has volunteered to hand out water. 
So that's the caliber of officers that we have at this department. Uh, Officer Blake Kinzer has been with us for about three and a half years. Uh, again, uh, outstanding uh, young man. Um, they were, uh, again, working the shift, trying to uh, make contact with uh, Mr. Saffel. And ultimately, this is uh, Officer Kinsler, and he's the one who got shot also in the leg, but shot three times. So uh, again, I'm uh, pleased with the, the quality of officers that we have. Uh, this is a very difficult situation. Uh, they really have a love for the city, and we appreciate that. Uh, there are some social media out there of Mr. Saffel that uh, you can see he has what's called extended magazines. Normally a gun has a, a magazine. This one is the size of a small club. Also, he's known to wear that bataclava. In this shooting, he gets out of the car with a bataclava on. I guess this is some significant rap lyrics, apparently. There you see is one of the magazines that we suspect was in the, the weapon that he shot at the officers. Again, you see extended magazines. Uh, and these are what we have out here in our streets right now. Uh, kind of casual, I think this is either Facebook or Instagram post. So, bearing that in mind, here is Officer G's body cam video of the incident. Show me some volume, is that on? Yeah, yeah, me too. It'll be, it'll be quick, but you'll be able to see Mr. Saffle get out of the gun with the out of the car with the gun in hand. being shot subsequent to that. Let's do that again. So again, this will be uh, available. Available um, at the conclusion of this. We just got to figure out how to get it to you. We've got thumb drives. There needs to be a link. We're ready to release. You can see he gets out, the gun's in his hand. And we are at this point unsure why he decided, after all the times he's ran and fled and kind of made a game of it, he decided to, have to shoot it out this time. Can you see the, the mouse pointer on the screen? Yeah. Okay. Where the mouse is pointed, that's where the firearm is. The extended mag starts to come into view right there. Officer G responds to the to the threat. And right here, you see him coming up. He's coming up to engage. It doesn't show it in the next frame because Officer G's arm ends up obscuring the camera for a brief second.
for now, I'll play it back regularly. Okay, so after this incident, um, the officers, responding officers applied a tourniquet to Sergeant G's leg, uh, which was a great life-saving me uh, mechanism because he was bleeding. Uh, then he was taken to Lakeland, both uh, officers were taken to Lakeland. Uh, Officer Klinsler was, was treated and, re and released with superficial gunshot wound. Uh, Sergeant G remains in the hospital after a surgery on his uh, injury, and uh, he's doing, he's doing uh, fine. And uh, they're going to observe him for, I think, a couple more days before he's released. So that is it. That's what happened. Uh, 700 block of Highland. We go to make contact with a guy we have been looking for, not only us, but the state police, the county. Uh, we make contact with the subject. He gets out, engages officers with a, with a handgun, extended magazine. Uh, Sergeant G, who is a combat veteran Marine, uh, was able to uh, maintain his composure, uh, return fire, uh, get to try to get to cover, uh, and so doing so, hitting the suspect where he ultimately died from his wounds. Uh, again, they were taken to the hospital where they were treated and are fine now. So that being said, uh, and I also want to thank uh, Sheriff Bailey. Uh, his crew was out there immediately and helped uh, kind of uh, take control of the scene pending the arrival of the state police. Uh, all the other agencies that had came into Benton Harbor to help, uh, Cloma Township, St. Joe, of course, uh, uh, Benton Township, all those agencies, we thank you. We thank Sheriff Bailey, of course, for support. The investigation is at this point, when we get done with this, you will not talk to me anymore. You will talk to whoever they have over there um, in, in regards to the investigation moving forward. So we also have uh, Prosecutor Steve Prangeli, who actually also came out and has been been very supportive and has helped guide uh, this investigation and what he needs to move forward if that's where it goes. So, that being said, any questions? The house that oh, oh. All right, I'll call you. Then you oh, go. Uh, the house that Sokol was at, what was their relationship to him? That I, I don't know. Yeah, we were, we backed out at the state police. That'd be part of their investigation. So I, I can't, out of ignorance, I don't know, man. Sorry. Yes, sir. Can you first uh, spell uh, uh, Saffle's name uh, for us? Uh, first spell it or spell it first? First, uh, first, middle, and last. Okay, it is. First is Dustin. Just kind of, oh, jeez. I'm sorry. Um, it is. Uh, D U S T I N, Dustin, middle of Lavelle, L E V E L L, Saffle is F, I'm sorry, S A F F E L L, uh, date of birth 518 of 89. And that will be, that mugshot will be available also. Yes, ma'am. Um, will you also tell the officer's names? Sure. Thank you. G. G E. G. Yeah. The other one is uh, Kinsler. K I N Z L E R. You know, those, those photos also. Everything you just saw here will be available to you. All right. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. You mentioned the suspect um, died from their wounds. Where was the suspect shot? I do not know. I do not know. Yes, sir. Were the officers, were they aware that he had a gun on him? Or is it possible that, were they aware that he possibly was armed? Well, yeah, because he had, a, there was officer safety uh, caution file in lean. 
So, uh, and that again, there's there's uh, warnings of prior police assaults, uh, weapon offenses, assault with dangerous weapons, domestic violence. So that's the first thing that kind of flashes across when we're uh, running some through lane. So they, we were aware of that. I don't know if they thought because he's ran, he takes off. He's taken off on these vehicle chases, uh, or state police don't chase. We chased him. Took off on these chases. So there was nothing, although they used caution, there was nothing that led to the belief that he's going to turn and fire on him this time. So, again, I have to commend my guys for being that aware, because uh, I think G was the only thing between him and Safo was green grass. So, um, yeah. Yes, sir. You mentioned that there were several vehicles that he was associated with. Do you know if um, how he obtained those or if he was the owner of any of those vehicles? I do not know. I do not know. Yes, sir. That video showed him getting out of the passenger side of the car. Was there someone else in the car with him or was he just sitting out there? Uh, that's a good question. That would be a question for the state police. I think we suspect there was somebody there, um, but I do not know. You know, when, I, when I got to the scene, we got to the scene, we grabbed our guys, kind of removed ourselves. Uh, just like if I was running a crime scene, I don't want, want people that are in my crime scene with them to get out. So we, you know, for us, there's our side of this with our guys making contacts, calling the sheriff, uh, coordinating. So those are more the investigative questions that the state police would, would be able to answer for you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, because of his past criminal history, uh, when they attempted to make contact, how many officers were on scene at that point? Uh, the initial contact was two. Sergeant G had called for uh, assistance from Officer Kinsler, and they kind of tried to cr triangulate on him because the car was in the driveway. Kind of got to a point they put their vehicles where it would he only had kind of one way in or out, and then that's when it kind of went to heck in a handbasket. So, yes, sir. When's the last time your officer has been hurt like this? I don't know. Hurt like this? In the line of fire. Uh, Probably uh, Commissioner Singleton. I think I'm not sure. Back in '96, yeah, you know we're, we're Benton Harbor, so we you know, we generally get hurt. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, would you happen to know how many times Sapple was shot? Do not know. And then uh, just finally, you might already said, but I just want to make sure I have it. Can you just state and spell your first last name and then your role with the Benton Harbor, please? Oh. That'd be helpful. All right. So, yeah, I don't know any of you guys. I just assume you knew who I was. Yeah. My name is uh, Dan McGinnis. Uh, first name is D-A-N-I-E-L. Last name is uh, M-C, capital G-I-N-N-I-S. I am the director of public safety here at the city of Ben Arbor. This is deputy director. Uh, this, this is my vice minion here. Deputy director, uh, Michael Clark. That's Michael Clark on the All right. Any other questions? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Um, so the, the two felony warrants, the home invasion and unlawful imprisonment, was what initially was what in majorly led up to them, uh, to your officers finding uh, Mr. Saffold in, in this car and have, trying to pull him over and find him, in addition to his past with the uh, with, with the different charges that he's been fleeing from, correct? So I also believe, and I can't answer this specifically, but there's also other charges that are in the coffers that are in between the submitted, being reviewed, authorized. So and maybe Deputy Clark can, can speak to if there's more um, that we had been looking for him for. I'm not sure if the domestic that I heard about was Baron Connie's domestic or there was a fresh domestic, I'm not sure. There, between uh, him running from the police and then his current charges, he the officers were looking for him in regards to some fresh incidents as well. Um, and it, he had gone as far as to post his, um, I guess you could call it success, from getting away from the police earlier in the week on his social media. Um, and was still continuing to also harass his victim who uh, was very cooperative and it was a, really how we got quite a few of the tips to track him down. So, uh, you know, it was a domestic situation as well as the remainder of the other issues. So there was no, all of these charges, all these different um, uh, crimes that he's accused of in the past that he was fleeing from, he was basically 
there were there were there was none that was exclusive to this. It was all inclusive for the reasons why he was on the run, why he was allegedly bragging about these things to social media. Correct. It wasn't one in particular. It was all. Of them. Yes. Correct. Correct. Yes. And the <coughs> excuse me, the PPO that Barian has has not been served yet. So we, we also needed to try to serve him that. Oftentimes when you got cross cross jurisdiction um, cases, you know they would contact us. Or we might contact Benton Township and say, if you come across this guy, could you serve our personal protection order for us? So Barian's PPO needed to be served on him to let him know that there was a PPO with him versus that victim. So, yes, sir. What's recovery like for the officers who were shot in this incident? Uh, can you shed any more light on, uh, you know, what recovery looks like for them? Um, you know, how quickly they um, can get back to work or uh, what resources are available for them, both phys physical health and mental health? Okay, uh, that's a good question. I appreciate that. Um, so I guess my, my first instinct is like, those are some some tough old codgers and those are good guys. So they were talking about last night getting back to work, amazingly. Um, but they might have been semi-doped up on pain medicine. Um, <laughs> um, so for us, uh, kind of working backwards, we have a process here, policy here at Ben Harbor Department of Public Safety. If we have a, what's called a major incident protocol. So what that is is we, we have a, uh, a, a counselor that we have uh, online that we could either do individual counseling for officers. Uh, we also do SISMs, which is those critical incident uh, sessions where we, those involved get together and talk about what feelings they may or may not have. Uh, those are very, very effective. So we do those, and we have, I think, a pretty successful and pretty um, consistent mental health part of this moving forward. As you know, this is a life-changing event for everyone involved on both sides. So we want to make sure that coming out of the gate, uh, of course, it's risk management piece where we want to make sure officers are at least getting back to normalcy as quickly as possible. So those wheels are already rolling. Uh, generally, what it, way it happens is you have situations like this, you have kind of two concurrent investigations. You have the administrative investigation that looks at, that's what we look at, uh, was, was policy followed? Do they have their body cams on? Do they do certain things according to how we teach it or what we have on policy here? Then concurrently, you have the criminal investigation into the incident for not just the suspect, for the officers, where the state police will get all the information together, uh, present that to the prosecutor. At that point, he will reveal all evidence and make a decision either to charge or not charge on both sides. So again, we, we have been successful in the past with being transparent. Again, when our first calls was to um, uh, Prosecutor Perangeli, letting him know here's where we are. So that's how that works. So you got the two investigations, then we have the mental health component for our guys, and that takes as long as it takes. There's no set limit or you get two visits and you got to pull it together. If it, it, it takes as long as it takes. So, because um, not just that, but it's kind of a cascade effect. So there are other officers that came to the aid to help these officers that weren't actually at the shooting, but they could be affected too. So that's where that, that, uh, that critical incident uh, team comes in where we, we get together and we're talking. It's all confidential. Nothing's ever written down. Personnel will never get it. It's just for the, the mental health and well-being of the officers. Great question. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Both cameras are running. I'm sorry? Both cameras were running. Yes. I told you we've been Harvard, man. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I apologize if I missed this before. Um, the officers were able to make contact with him from a tip then? Or did they just spot his vehicle on the driveway? Spot the vehicle. Okay. Sorry, he spotted the vehicle. Yeah, he spotted the vehicle. So, yes, sir. Uh, you talked about the charges earlier, how they were all intertwined, not of them being, being exclusive. Um, and then also you answered earlier about the fact that you can't comment on who, who if, if applicable, was in the driver's seat of that car at the time. Is there a reason to believe that he, that Mr. Saffle may have had an accomplice in all of the different charges that led up to him, you know, from the ones that he was fleeing from, from the domestic violence to the drug charges, assault officers, his past history? Is there a possible accomplice that you and the Michigan State Police are looking into to possibly charge as well? I, I do not know. That's a good question, and I won't speak out of ignorance. I did not look into Dumb, or ground down to those details, so I am not sure if there were other people in the car at the times he fled or not. I, I do not know. 
Any questions? Okay. Is there anything we want to add over there? Law enforcement partners? <laughs> Some of these days, one of these days I'm going to be able to sit over on the side and observe. <laughs> but if there be nothing else, we'll conclude this. Uh, then we'll just make provisions on, uh, I don't know if maybe the best thing to do is maybe send a, a link to the file or do you guys have thumb drives that you travel around with? Sound like that. Guy with the with the Magnum PI shirt is ready to go. <laughs> a, a link would help. Huh? A, a link to we'll, we'll, we'll get that out. We'll send it out via uh, BC Press, and if, if you have one, we'll, uh, we'll it'll take some time, but we'll get that get that done. So I appreciate you guys coming, uh, and uh, if you have any other further questions, you may contact Lieutenant Shane Krieger of Michigan State Police. <laughs> If you have any questions about my guys, you can you can contact me, uh, Gretchen McGinnis. So, okay. Uh, thank you. Oh, let, let me be remiss. This is uh, Mayor Muhammad. I'm sorry, Mayor. Um, Mayor of City Ben Arbor, and this is Commissioner Jay Edwards, the second ward commissioner, uh, who have uh, been very, very supportive of the department and our guys. So I didn't, I didn't want to, now I'm sorry, sir, I'm back to you. I apologize. So also, we have Commissioner Ethel Clark Griffin that is here. Uh, she's on the fourth ward. So again, very supportive. And actually, my, my, my personal advisor, uh, confidant, uh, Pastor Maurice McAfee, who is here. And Mac, you got you want to say anything? All right, one of the rare preachers that see a microphone and don't have to jump at it, so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me not be remiss. My other, my my main confidant, which is our chaplain, uh, Reverend Taylor, who's been a reserve and been a chaplain with us for. <coughs> Yeah, yeah. So uh, there's a very famous book that says, uh, Multitude of the Council, there is safety. So I try to surround myself with people I trust that's going to tell me the truth, God fearing men. So uh, thank you much. So, okay. All righty.